Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has warned Greece over competing claims over energy around the disputed island of Cyprus. I sat down with the President of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, Mustafa Akinci, to ask him what he thinks about the prospects for peace on the contested island. A solution which will envisage our freedom, our political equality and our security. And security for all, freedom for all, and political equality for all. Mustafa Kinja, thank you so much for speaking to TRT World. It's been 35 years since the events in Northern Cyprus, since the formation of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. How has TRNC fared in these 35 years? Well, as, as you know, due to the unwillingness of the other side, we, we had to declare uh, the independence uh, of our republic. Uh, before that, uh, as you know, uh, we had the Turkish Federate State of uh, Northern Cyprus, in which I was the youngest member, by the way. Uh, but uh, after so many trials that we couldn't uh, reach uh, to an agreement, uh, we had to form uh, and establish uh, the TRNC. But uh, even in that declaration, we kept the door open uh, to an eventual uh, federal setup, uh, depending on uh, the political will and determination uh, on, of the other side uh, as well. Uh, but unfortunately, so far, uh, we couldn't see that. So on the one hand, of course, we are trying to keep up uh, with, with the situations uh, surrounding us. We are trying to develop our economy. We are trying to develop our democracy in, in, into a, a more modern uh, way. And uh, we also want to keep the option open uh, for a solution. Uh, so two things go parallel. On, on, on the one hand, uh, we, we try to develop uh, our system. Uh, we want to make all the necessary reforms, uh, e economic-wise, social-wise, political-wise. And at the same time, of course, uh, we want not to shut the doors uh, for a possible uh, solution if and when the other side uh, comes uh, to their senses. Uh, so to share power and wealth uh, with, with their neighbors. But time seems to be running out. Mevlut Cavusoglu, the Turkish foreign minister, has come out and he said that other options beyond this current course need to be explored. What is he alluding to and will, more importantly, it be acceptable to you because you have said that this is the only way? Well, let, let me be very open uh, on, on this. Uh, if uh, there was any other options uh, on the table, uh, I, I would uh, be the first uh, person to know about it. First, the Greek Cypriots wants uh, to keep uh, the status quo. They, they want, uh, in a way, uh, to show that they negotiate, but uh, in fact, they, they want the continuation of the status quo, which is not to the benefit uh, of the Turkish Cypriots. Uh, the only option under the UN parameters so many years has been a kind of a bi-zonal, bi federation on the basis of political equality. The problem is not the parameters itself. The problem has always been and still is the mentality of the Greek Cypriot leadership. Recently, the Greek Cypriot leader came out with the idea of decentralized uh, federation. First he said loose federation, then he said uh, decentralized, meaning that this time he wants less power in the center, more power in, in the federated states, in the constituent states. We are, not, we are not against the idea. I am on record saying that as long as 
our political participation, our effective participation in the decision-making process within the framework of the remaining competences for the federal government, we are ready to discuss. We have been all along insisting to have more, more powers for, for the wings, whereas the other side uh, constantly uh, wanted to have more powerful center. Now they came out with this idea. We said, okay, as long as there is not um, an open-ended uh, process uh, to take another 50 years because, mind you, the <coughs> negotiations on Cyprus uh, has been going on since 1968, which is 50 years. We don't want another 50 years to go continue on like this. Uh, they need to show political will and determination like we, the Turkish Cypriots, have shown back in 2004 during referenda as we vote to 65% yes, but they refuse this annan plan with 75% no vote, like we showed uh, in Kram Montana. Uh, in that again, uh, they uh, couldn't come uh, to an agreement. So, you know, uh, to say that uh, there, there are uh, many options that we can discuss, uh, it doesn't seem realistic because what is at hand is the bi-zonal, bi federal set. So what is uh, Mevlut Mevl Çavuşoğlu talking about when he talks about these other options? Like too many people, uh, Mr. Foreign Minister is also fed up uh, with the attitude of, of the Greek Cypriots. And uh, he also is trying to understand uh, what the Greek Cypriot leader is really seeking for. Because uh, we have learned uh, that during Kram Montana uh, negotiations, uh, that both myself, Mr. Anastasiadis, and Mr. Chaushov were present. Uh, Mr. Uh, Anastasiadis um, aired some views uh, with him uh, as, if, as if he would be inclined uh, to try to form a two-state solution. When I met uh, with him uh, in September, uh, sorry, in April, uh, on 16th April uh, this year, I question this, whether he is really for a two-state solution. And he went around the issue. He didn't say anything concrete. At, at the end of the day, I put him a very concrete question. He said, is it on the agenda or not? I need to know it. As your counterpart in the negotiation, I need to know it. He said, no, 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 it's not on the agenda. So he's talking to you beyond the agenda, offering something that isn't present in the agenda or for the discussions that were specified. No, no, no. What he has been saying all along is what we know they, they are on the agenda. He, he has not mentioned anything outside the agenda. But you're saying he's selling different things that might not be true or in this case might not apply. When it comes he, to two-state solution, for example. He said so to Mr. Chaucho, this is what we know. Not to me. Not to me in, in, in its concrete terms and in, in its real terms uh, that uh, we can believe in him. So they, why, are they sending, why are, they, are they sending different messages to the Turks and to you? Listen. Uh, this is a problem, the, isn't it? The, this, uh, well, the problem lies in somewhere else, but the, this is a kind of a rhetoric uh, that will fade away. Uh, after uh, Ms. Lutz uh, will come and will try to form the terms of reference, everybody will face the reality. So the, Mr. Anastasiadis himself also, and everybody, all interested parties, will see the reality that what is at hand... Including the Turks. Uh, including everybody. What is at hand is only what has been uh, within the uh, parameters of the UN so far.
Northern Cyprus's relations right now with Turkey. What, how would you describe this relation at this point in time? Well, the relations has always been at the highest level. Uh, you know that <clears throat> Turkey Cypriot after 1963, uh, that they were left out of the joint uh, republic, which was established in uh, 1960. We are mostly uh, depending on Turkey then, and after 74, still due to the embargoes and isolation policy that uh, we have been facing all along, we had to depend on Turkey. So we have all the infrastructure inv investments coming in from uh, Turkey. We have uh, all our uh, communication via Turkey, transportation via Turkey. So there is a different kind of a relationship. Uh, you said uh, earlier that uh, Turkey is the only country recognizing TRNC. That's true. Uh, but there is a different kind of dependency on Turkey. I wish that uh, we could be more standing on our own uh, feet. But due to these uh, embargoes and due to the pre prevailing conditions uh, as status quo, uh, unfortunately, uh, we still need uh, more time. I would like, uh, of course, uh, to, to be part of the international community. And for that, uh, to be part of uh, the world family and to be part of uh, the European family uh, because uh, in uh, 2004 when we said yes, in fact we said yes to two things. One, for solving the Cyprus problem and ending the status quo, but also becoming a member of the European family, be becoming a member of the EU. What if the offer is, okay, reunify, and then you will be a member of the European Union. Yeah, well, if and when, uh, there will be a solution. But of course... Reunification? Yes. Specifically? Yes. You yourself said, you know, we can't wait for another 50 years, but in this current deadlock, it doesn't move anywhere. Uh, the Secretary General uh, has appointed uh, Miss Lut uh, to come uh, to the island in order to try to draft a mutually agreeable terms of reference. I am on record saying uh, what you are saying, that we don't have another 50 years. Therefore, for the first time in the history of uh, Cyprus Security Council resolutions, or rather Secretary General reports for the first time, a kind of a time frame and a kind of a message that the open-ended process is a matter of the past. A clear horizon we are in need of, and we want results-oriented process. This is the wordings of the Secretary General report. It is the wordings of the Turkish Cypriots' leadership, actually. I have been advocating this all along. Now it became a part of the Secretary General vocabulary. It, it is a great achievement, if you ask me, because now when uh, Ms. Lut will, will come, we will con concentrate on two things. One, uh, the essence. Second, the modality. And the modality will definitely comprise the time element. Because, as you rightly say, we don't, need, we don't have any, uh, another uh, 50 years to spend. And then what happens if nothing comes off, even this? Ah, this is a very good question. Uh, this is what uh, we, the Turkish Cypriots, also uh, are keen. And, uh, we but what is the worst case scenario? The... Is there a cutoff time in your mind? Yes, there is a cutoff time. And... Uh, I, I was put this question um, a few days ago, and my answer is uh, the following. Uh, we are not talking in terms of years anymore. Maybe not in terms of weeks, but we are talking in terms of months. An agreement on Cyprus in terms of months? No, no, no. I am not saying agreement. I am saying the time limit that I foresee for the 
So you're expecting Poten something. Potential forthcoming negotiations if it starts. I am talking about uh, months. I am not talking about the outcome. I am talking about the modality. I am talking about the time frame. Of course, I wish to see that uh, finally we reach a solution because I believe that it will be good for everybody. But it's not only up to me. Uh, if it was only up to me, we could do it right away because I am determined uh, to see this solution because I see real benefit for everybody involved. But of course, not any kind of a solution, a solution which will envisage our freedom, our political equality, and our security. And security for all, freedom for all, and political equality for all. You seem to be in a very sensitive and a very difficult position. Because on the one hand, you have to deal with the Cypriots, the Greek Cypriots. On the other hand, you have to deal with the Turks who are the, is the only country that recognizes the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And then you have your own constituency of Turkish Cypriots. How difficult of a position are you in? Look here, I don't feel that I'm in a diff difficult position uh, for some good reasons. One, I know what I want and I know what my people what want. What do you want and what do your people want? I want what, what my people mandated me. I went to the people, uh, to my people, to my constituency, and I put forward uh, my ideas uh, to them. And I said very openly what kind of a solution could be for Cyprus within the framework of UN parameters, within the framework of 11 February 2014 agreement, which has, had been conducted between my predecessor and uh, Mr. Anastasiadis. And within that framework, uh, more than 60% of uh, the Turkish Cypriot people voted for me. So I am with that mandate, and I, I, I know what I want, and I know what my people want. My problem is not with my people or with this or with that. The problem is with the prevailing mentality of, of the uh, Greek Cypriot leadership that one, it seems that still they are not ready uh, to share power with the Turkish Cypriots. The second, they are not ready to share the wealth uh, with the Turkish Cypriots. That's the real problem, and we need to overcome that problem. And of course, we need the assistance of Turkey and Greece as well. Areas uh, of interest uh, within the context of uh, negotiation. One is solely within the framework of Cypriots. That's why we formed two tables in Kram Montana. On one table, we have the internal aspects of the Cyprus problem, including uh, property, including power sharing, including territorial aspects, and including governance and everything. And on the other hand, which uh, includes security and guarantees, there you, you have the uh, guarantor countries coming in. But even there, we had our uh, places as well. In other words, on the internal aspects, although this does not exclude our dialogue uh, with Turkey, as a leader of the Turkish Cypriots, I need to continue uh, close dialogue not only with Turkey, with the political parties, with the government, with the um, opposition parties, with the NGOs. Uh, I am trying to do my best in order to uh, keep them informed uh, and share uh, the news, what's going on uh, with them as well. Uh, but uh, you have to understand that on this issues, at the end of the day, it will be the Cypriots, Turkey Cypriots and Greek Cypriots, who will have to say the last word. Not Greece, not Turkey. Nobody. It will be up to the Turkey Cypriots and Greek Cypriots to decide what will be their fate in a referendum. This is what happened 
uh, during 2004. But this does not exclude the importance of Turkey and Greece supporting this kind of a social. In a supporting role. We, we need to have their support. We need their assistance. We need to keep up with this dialogue. And we need to continue this uh, to a successful conclusion. President, the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has come out and said that Turkish vessels will soon begin exploring in northern Cyprus territorial waters. These are contested areas. When you talk about looking at eye to eye with your Turkish partners, is there complete agreement on this? Yes, uh, we have complete agreement because uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we have been asking uh, to our future potential partners, the Greek Cypriots, to form a committee with us. But they don't agree. They said this no, is illegal. In order, uh, in order to discuss these issues, because they agree that we have our share there, but for the future, after a solution. When is that solution? Nobody knows. Is it going to happen? Nobody knows. So they want to own themselves. Uh, for this, they have an course, agreement with the Egyptians from 2003, and with the Israelis, and with, with others. And, and Turkey so says and so. nothing doing. And they are they are going ahead with a very uh, Ill illogical uh, uh, project, uh, which uh, instead of having a pipeline via Turkey and Greece in order to reach to European Union countries, they are opting uh, for a longer and uh, more expensive uh, pipeline. Uh, with Israel uh, gas uh, to pass uh, from Cyprus, Greek Cyprus, uh, Crete, uh, mainland Greece, and Italy. Much more expensive, uh, much more time needed, and much, much more, uh, uh, much deeper waters in the Aegean uh, uh, rather than passing through uh, Mediterranean. What is your position as a president of the Republic of Northern Cyprus? Regarding this? Regarding this particular issue, and especially Cyprus saying that this is all illegal. Turkey cannot enter these waters because it comes down to claims. Look, uh, there are uh, two issues here. One, uh, Turkey claims certain areas. Uh, Turkey says that uh, those areas uh, comes under uh, her territorial uh, waters, continental shelf waters rather. And there are areas where we as TRNC are claiming because it overlaps uh, with the Greek Cypriot uh, parcels. So for those areas that is overlapping, uh, we have issued uh, permits uh, for TPAO, you know, Turkish uh, oil company. Uh, to conduct uh, seismic uh, uh, works uh, on behalf of us. So Turkey now is doing two things, actually. One is uh, trying to find out whether there are uh, deposits or not in, in her own uh, areas. EEZs. Uh, yes, and at the same time, uh, we look forward that uh, this will continue on the areas that I have just uh, but what if they move towards a conflict? These are contested waters. Uh, well, uh, this is what I have been telling all the time. I instead of creating tension, I, I am asking uh, to create cooperation. Instead of uh, taking this uh, uh, to create problems, as if the problems in our area are not enough, to add more and more problems, to show a very good example for cooperation, which will be beneficial for all Turkish Cypriots, Greek Cypriots, and for the regional countries, including Turkey and Greece. So my logic tells me that in this area, we should create a vision where instead Who of excluding- Who have you been telling this to, by the way, President? Uh, Ali, instead of excluding Turkey and Turkish Cypriots, it is much more beneficial for the Greek Cypriots as well to include into the equation not only Israel, uh, uh, Egypt, and other countries, but Turkey, Cypriots, and Turkey, because that will be beneficial and hel helpful for them as well. Because you have the Turkish lira, but the spending in the euros, it's, it's a very difficult life, isn't it? It is, yes. Uh, but we have to face it until we find a, a better formula. So uh, the better formula for all is to create the conditions for peace, stability, 
mutually acceptable solution uh, to our problems. And for that, we need to negotiate. We need to negotiate with good faith. And we, we need to negotiate what is possible to achieve. Not uh, to, to think uh, that uh, everything can be achievable uh, and uh, not to serve for the continuation of status quo. Status quo is containing threats and danger in itself. President Okunji, thank you so much. Thank you.